Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Let's get started with our hosts, Linda McKissick and Dana Gentry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. I'm Linda McKissick. And I'm Dana Gentry. Hey, Dana, how are you? I'm doing good. I see you're in sunny San Diego. I am. It's a little chilly, but I'm not going to complain because the rest of the world is frozen over. <laughs> so I'm crazy. just going to put my little sweater on and get out there in the sun and, and look at the ocean anyway. What, what's the temp there today? Low, it's like 60, which is a yeah. little chilly for me because we're right on the water. And so yeah. I love it. The sun's out and it's gorgeous. And so if you just, as long as you have like a sweater, sweatshirt and, you know, kind of leggings or something, you're good. So yeah, um, I know the, the world's frozen. So they'd, they'd, they'd trade me any day. Yeah. I'm actually in Charleston this week, but I go back home, back to Kentucky on Sunday and they're completely frozen. Like nobody has power today. Uh, people are trying to get generators. I mean, it's been nuts and I, and it was, it's like 57, 58 here today. I mean, not warm, but not go, to, go to home Depot and buy you a bunch of generators and sell them. Take them back them. and sell them. <laughs> I know I need to. <laughs> we, are, we are entrepreneurs, aren't we? That's right. <laughs> I know it's crazy. I was talking to Heather earlier and she texted me and said, I'm taking my, she didn't have power. And she said, well, she lives out in the hills anyway, but she said, I'm taking my cell phone and plugging it up in my car to charge for a little bit. So if you need, if I don't respond, that's why. And then two minutes later, I got a text that said, "Never mind, my car door's frozen shut and I can't get it open. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's nuts. That's I know. Nuts. It's that's crazy. Nuts. Awesome. Well, what do we do? We're just going to do a quick, uh, what's going on in the real estate world update this week, if, 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 yep. if you will. And let's just kind of talk about some of the issues that are swirling out there with our real estate uh, agents and community. So yep. why don't you kind of kick us off and get, give us an idea of kind of what, uh, what are some of the things you're seeing and hearing? Yeah. Well, I think the biggest one, um, is, and well, this, this podcast will drop a few days after this has happened, but for us, when we're recording yesterday, uh, circulating around the real estate world is that Zillow bought showing time, uh, which is the platform that, you know, we all use to schedule showings. Um, and so we had the privilege of, of listening to Gary Keller earlier today. And it, it's, it's, I've just, I've read Facebook comment after Facebook comment after Facebook comment on it. And, it, and Gary got on today and said, guys, I told you so. I mean, I told, I've been telling you for the last three and a half years that this is what's going to happen. You know, that Zillow has a, a, their, their play is to get as much data as they possibly can and to, and to get control of the consumer and get to them direct so that unfortunately, you know, our industry is at risk and real estate agents aren't, aren't in business anymore. And it's, it's insane. I've had so many people messaging me saying, what's Gary going to say? What's Gary saying about it? What are you hearing? What do you guys think? What's Linda saying? What are you saying? And really it's true. I feel like we've all been waiting for this to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So true. And do you think that most agents out there, Dana, even understand? Well, I think Gary defined it as two different people. There's people out there that are so busy yep. that they're not paying attention to what's going on. And then there's the rest of the world, rest of the agents that don't care. Yeah. He said they don't care. Somebody else is paying attention and protecting <laughs> us. Yep. That's exactly what he said. He said that the ones that are too busy and the ones that are saying they don't care are just hoping that somebody else is going to solve it, make the decision and solve the problem. And, yep. and really it's got to be all of us <laughs> that are going to, you know, I want to buy for the whole real estate community. I want to buy sweatshirts that said underestimate us. This will be fun. Yeah. The ones me and you have. <clears throat> if we woke up as a community and as a organization mm -hmm. and said, no way, no way are you going to get our consumer. It's not best for our consumer. It's not best for our industry. It's not best for us. And we just did. And we did like what Gary said. We did what's hard. Yeah. What's be hard. Let's do what's hard so that our life becomes easy later. And we're not disintermediated yeah. like travel agents and people like that. Yep. Yeah. I love what well, you said. You said that's what shirt and Gary said he wanted us to all get, go get shirts made that said, I choose hard, which I yeah. thought was a great idea. Um, but really it's, it, it, he said it perfectly. He said, it's not, uh, the, there's a battle being waged and it's not a wage on a listing or on a buyer side. It's a wage against our whole entire industry. And I do, I am scared Linda a little bit that there are so many realtors that just have their head in the sand that they aren't listening and they haven't been paying attention. And, and that part is scary to me because 
there is a, there is a war that's being waged a battle like Gary said and if you think about it we say this we've said this before but you can go back and look I mean look at look at what happened with Blockbuster and look at now Netflix and then look at what's happened with some you know Kmart and now look at Amazon I mean it's happened over the years it's it's been one of those things where we talk about it it's like uh, gradually gradually and then suddenly all of a second we wake up and something's gone and mm -hmm. and it I think it's ner I think it's unnerving really to be honest you know one of the things that Gary I thought today he explained so well was the difference between mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive um, and, and he and he said on that that uh, the consumer really is agnostic because they can go right now and search on Zillow, Redfin, their their agents app or a website, or they can go to you know any any uh, realtor.com, whatever it is, they can search anywhere. They're not tied to one specific mutually exclusive way to search, and therefore they don't really care. They they've just wanted to be able to search, and they're going and getting on all these different sites. Um, and, and I think it's just interesting to watch because it's, we have to figure out a way to get ahead of it. Yeah. So, you know, if somebody's sitting out there saying, well, I haven't been paying attention, but I do want to pay attention. This got my attention. <laughs> well, and I think, uh, you know, what he said about, uh, DocuSign and yeah. Loop and, you know, that's been a hard conversion for us. Yeah. I mean, our it's have very hard. struggled and it's still hard. But now we start to see why that would be important, why that's important. Absolutely. Yeah. Not, yeah. What? Sorry. What? I yeah, hear Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. He said, why not to be in contract with him? And Jimmy's adding his two cents in the background. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. What if we, how would we feel? Well, Gary said uh, specific, you know, because as, as, well, Keller, I know we, I know we don't talk about a lot, a lot about Keller Williams on here because we we talk to everybody and we want to bring value to everybody, no matter what company they're with. And so for a lot of our listeners that aren't with Keller Williams, they may not know this, but Gary made the decision to pull out of, of Dot Loop, you know, I guess what, a year or so ago, a year ago or whatever. And it has been a change. But today he asked us the question. He said, how would you guys feel today, right now today, knowing that now Zillow not only owns Dotloo, but they own Showing Time now too, yesterday to the tune of 500 mil. How would you feel today if we would have signed that agreement and been in contract with, with Dotloo for another seven years? Yeah, yeah. And he, he said, really, you'd say we were idiots <laughs> if we did it. <laughs> and so sometimes we don't understand that stuff if we're not really involved in it and we're not doing our due diligence and we're not listening and learning um, and we're just stuck out there, you know, doing another transaction or with our head in the sand. And it sounds harsh, but it, it's really reality. But Gary said, it's just, it's a painful journey, but it's worth it because we have to protect our industry. Yeah. Yeah. And so what would be some of the hard things you would suggest that agents could start to do to help wage, you know, that protection for us as, as an industry? Well, you know, somebody shared two questions and I, I took a screenshot of them today when they shared them because I thought this was genius. They said, no matter what brokerage you're with right now, you need to be asking two questions. There are two questions to be asked. Number one is, do you as an agent have a consumer portal available to your database on the app store that protects your sphere of influence and your clients and competes with Zillow? Or are you using something right now Let's just say, for example, because my team was using this follow-up boss. Well, we're we're open to Zillow being able to go and buy follow-up boss. I mean, really, at the end of the day. So yeah. do, do, does your brokerage or do you have it as an agent, do you have a consumer portal that that is protected, protects your sphere um, and actually competes with Zillow? No, it's not something that they could go and own. And then the second question was, does your brokerage that you're with own the technology that you use or are those parts of your business vulnerable to acquisition by Zillow? Could they come in and purchase the CRM that your brokerage is, is renting or using? I mean, you know, you just, they're just good questions to ask and be aware of. Yeah. Well, and because the end game is the consumer, which right now that we still have, and that's what we need to protect. 
And, you know, they're now in the ability the, for the IDX feed. So we need to be going yep. to our boards and making sure they're following all the same guidelines we have to follow, That's right. which will make their life messy for a while yep. and make it hard for them for a while. So good for them. We've had to do it too. Yep. So we need to be, just be paying attention. And, uh, you know, I've always said, stop funding them, stop sending them the money Yep. you know, and learn how to get those leads yourself um, would be a good start. And then work the heck out of your database so yep. that nobody can penetrate that. Well, that was the next thing I was going to say is that right now we have, and I've been sharing this with office meetings and, and on Zooms that we're doing, and I know you have been too, but back, let's see, I guess, when was that? Back in probably the fall of last year, I interviewed Lance and Karina Logan with the Loken Group, a uh, top agent inside of Keller Williams. And, and we interviewed them for the region. And, and I asked them what their one big goal was for 2021. And typically you would expect them to say a GCI number or a unit number or a volume number. And, and Karina said, Dana, you're gonna think this is nuts, but we're following, we're really listening to what's going on in the industry. And so our one of our big goal for 2021 is to have a 95% or higher five-star rating from all of our consumers, all of our clients on any platform. So they really were talking about how this year it's all about the experience. They're not focusing on a GCI goal or a unit goal. They're focusing on an experience goal because they believe what Gary has been saying and what, what we've all been hearing that people are going to, they're going to stay because of the experience. So as agents, we got to go figure out and we might have to spend some money. We might have to take a couple of steps backwards, but we got to figure out what we can do to create the ultimate experience for our sphere of influence, for our database, for our clients. So much so that if somebody like Redfin comes in and says, you know, hey, I'll, I'll do this for you easier and cheaper and make you smarter and I'll do it for 1% that they aren't like, okay, sounds good. Um, because, you know, Gary said today, Linda, he said, the consumer's mind is if you can make me smarter and do it easier and cheaper, then I'm all in. And mm -hmm. so we have to figure out a way that we provide them with such value and such experience that we can still be valid and that we aren't at, we aren't opening ourselves up to be at risk of, of yeah. losing our people. Yeah. And one of the first moves that was made to do that is to have a mortgage company that as agents, we yeah. can actually use it and offer uh, zero cost loans to people to yep. compete because that's what our competitors are going to do. They're going to give away our commissions right. in order to make money on the loans. And so yep. we're going to give away the loans in order to protect our agents commissions. And so yep. those plays are being made for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. And once we all get behind all that and we put our energy and our time in letting that be our, our value um, opportunity and our, you know, kind of our secret weapon, all those things are going to add together and be unpenetratable. Yep, that's right. He, Gary said today, I wrote down, he said, it's a race to give the client the experience and the data that they can't get anywhere else. They might be able to get the data from Zillow if it's even correct. I mean, it's a joke, but, but can they get the experience? And the reality is if they're making the largest financial decision that most people make in their lives when it comes to buying or selling a home, because he did say right now, I wrote that down, there's 128 million households in the United States, 128 million households. So, you know, the, the plan that I think is amazing and brilliant that Gary's come up with is that if, if even with Keller Williams, just let's use it as an example, cause that's what you and I know. If we had 128,000 agents in our company that went and put a thousand of their contacts into command that we own, uh, that we, that Keller Williams owns, then we have 128 million people that aren't going to Zillow anymore. And right. that, those are going to be the ways to stop it. Um, otherwise, I mean, they've got the money, so they're going to keep acquiring and buying and, and taking over the things that they can to get our data. Well, and now that they're all joining MLSs and stuff, they're going to get accurate data. That's right. The, the data that we've been saying, oh, well, their data is not any good. It's going to get good. They're going to yep. fix that. Yeah, yep. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, there was one more thing I was wanting to say that he said that I thought was so good. Um, oh, well, you talked about it was the mortgage and then the insurance. Um, and he said, uh, he said right now the game hasn't changed yet. So we just have a bunch of bunch of agents that are paying attention now because they're panicking. Because even if they heard about Dot Loop owning Zillow, 
but you know, I don't know, Linda, you and I still talk to agents on a regular basis that don't know that Zillow owns dot loop. So, so that makes me a little nervous too, but he said the game hasn't changed yet because, but now it Zillow's kind of doing us a favor because with now with the purchase of showing time, eight more agents are paying attention and, and because they're starting to panic, then they're starting to really understand and want to do the research. Um, and so he just said, we have to figure out a way and continue to push hard. We figured out the way we have to continue to push hard about how we can offer the homeowner an experience that is mutually exclusive. And that's how you win the battle. And he said, it's the same thing that most of us, our mobile banking has done with us. Mm -hmm. Well, and you're going to have to, you're going to, you're going to have to stop buying bolt on technology. Yeah. You're going to have technology that you feel is confident, uh, that is working in your, in your protection and yep. in your space for you, not one that is who knows what the heck they're going to do with it or when they're going to do with it. If a big enough check comes along, they're going to sell it. Yep. And then there you go and you're trapped. So I think we have to we have to get uncomfortable for a little while because to be honest, it is uncomfortable building your own technology and, yeah. and you know, your own artificial intelligence and all that stuff, but I'll take uncomfortable over out of business. <laughs> <any day. Me laughs> you know, any, I'll take hard, give me hard. Yep. Just don't take away an industry that has been great to me. Great to so many people has provided us with unlimited opportunity and we earn every penny we get because we serve people well and we help, help people. Um, but, uh, we got, we got to stand up and fight together. I don't care what company you're with, whatever you got to wake up yeah. and you got to start. If your company's not doing these things, you can start pushing like heck to make sure they do. And guess what? They're behind the eight ball. Yeah. So they better get after it. Uh, yeah. but do not stay asleep and then wake up one day, like the, uh, taxi drivers and the, and the travel agents and go, what the heck just happened? What am I going to do if I don't sell real estate? Or if now I all work for Zillow for the price they decide I'm worth. That And that's the scariest part, honestly, I think. Because, you know, we've joked for the last two or three years now and said, they wake up every day and want to put us out of business and then come to us and say, hey, we'll pay you 50 bucks to go open a door. Right. And that's kind of been the joke. But, but <laughs> and I mean, that might not be a joke anymore, really, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's, it's a real serious thing. Um, so yeah, it's, I'm anxious. We'll get to hear Gary next week at, at the convention. And I'm, I'm very anxious to hear all you know this. Day, you know what day that is? Cause we'll drop this on, maybe we could drop this even earlier if we have to. Yeah, Actually, that's what I was going to say, because what, what I would love for you and I to get together and offer, we've talked about this is if you are wanting to hear more about this and you would like to hear Gary then Linda and I'll buy your ticket and we'll, we'll yeah. make sure that you have the opportunity to, to at least just listen. It's next Tuesday and Wednesday. So yeah, yeah. If, you're not with K, if you're not with KW and you have no way to get to hear Gary, reach out to us, let us know. We'll buy your ticket for, so you can hear that part of it because the better informed everyone is. And the more we all work together, I don't care who you're with, the more we all work together, the more we're going to come out of this, uh, in better in better shape for our industry yeah, so absolutely. also the link in the show notes uh dana and yeah they just need to um yeah and what we'll do is we'll we'll have we'll um let's have let's do just info at everything life and real estate.com you can email us if you would like to virtually attend we normally yes. we'd be, normally we'd be in vegas <laughs> but right now we're going to be watching virtual so, yeah. um, so what we'd like to do is if you'd like to email us, then we'll, we'll make sure that we register you and that you can have a chance to get on and listen. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's switch gears and talk about what else is going on. What else are you hearing out in the marketplace that you feel like is a big issue for agents? I think a big issue right now is multiple offers. I mean, it is insane. And I was just talking with Greg, uh, a top agent in Ohio, team leader in the office. And and, and he, we were talking about how so many agents in the offices have saying they're, they're presenting offers and there's like 10, 15, 20, one of them had 35 offers, Linda, over the weekend, this past weekend. And so they were looking for tactics to win multiple offers. Um, and it's, it's, it's crazy because then buyers are feeling like, oh my gosh, okay. If I've lost out on three or four now, then forget it. I'm just going to wait. Uh, and you know, that's not what we want. So I think figuring out ways, I've got a couple I'm pulling up to share, but did, did you yeah. ever used to have any ideas around winning multiple offers? Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's kind of like everything, you know, I've been doing interviews for my regional ops uh, person, yep. EA person. And, you know, 
I, I go after the person that I feel like is either write like one of the first things we have them do is write me a paragraph of why they think they'd be good in that role. So I think letters have always been good, you know, more personal issues of, you know, yep. about your family. Um, you know, people connect to stories that they feel like are themselves. So if that you can relate in some way to that family yep. about your family being like they were when they got that house or, or what they've enjoyed about it. I always say those personal notes, I think make sure. a, uh, yeah to the sellers, I think makes a difference, you know? And then the other thing is, I think number one upfront, educating your buyers, because what's the worst that's gonna happen here is you're gonna get a bunch of ticked off buyers at you yep, yep. because they don't understand. And so if they, if you make them understand, we could go up against 30 offers, yeah. um, then all of a sudden they're not mad at you when all of a sudden there's 30 offers and they had no idea there was gonna be 30, could be 30 offers or 20 yep. offers or 10 or whatever. So I think educating the buyer, uh, and then making them have all their ducks in a row, uh, complete 100% approval, you know, cash if you can, you know, whatever is important to that seller and you never really know. It's kind of like when I tell people to find out what someone's value gap is, yep. the more you can understand about that person's value gap, like maybe it's to stay in the house longer. Uh, maybe it's to, uh, it's to have, you know, less, you know, pressure on moving out or maybe it's a, uh, whatever it is, if you get, the more you can find out about that and, and structure your offer in such a way to fill whatever their fears are, or value gaps are, then I think you're going to have a better chance. Yeah. You said a lot of the things. So there were, there were people that were posting, um, to this in the, in Gary's top 100 page, and they gave a lot of great ideas in here. I'll just kind of rattle some of them off. The letters to families were also a big one. A lot of them talked about how this is why they have made it such a point to have such great relationships with other agents so that when they see their offer come through, I mean, if I'm doing a deal and, I, and I'm the listing agent and I, we're in 30 multiple offers, but I see that Linda brings an offer, I'm going to be, you know, you might not that the agent steers the client, but you know that you can say, hey, in good faith, they're great to work with. I've never had a bad transaction with this agent. Their clients are always well qualified. Um, somebody said in here, they've started really having like working on their relationships with other agents and that they're giving them, this girl said, I give a, a $50 Nordstrom gift card and a box of chocolates to every co-broker I do now, as I want to build great relationships with my uh, peers in the industry. Um, so I think it started with that. And then they, people are doing shorter inspection periods. They're waiving appraisals. Um, they're agreeing to not requesting repairs outside of roof and AC repairs. So they'll say we're getting an appraisal, but we'll only ask for it if it has to do with the roof and the AC. Um, yeah. They're having their listings call or their lenders call the listing agents. Uh, they Some people said it, it begins with the first communication with the listing agent mirroring that you will be easy and great to work with. Somebody said have buyers borrow cash short term from family or friends just to make a cash offer because cash offers are winning way more yep. than, yep. than, uh, than borrowed money. Um, so they, another lady said, we've had a great deal winning multiple offers. We've been using escalation clauses with fairly good success, such as buyer will pay X dollars over the highest bona fide offer. Seller mm -hmm. must provide proof of highest offer with counter offer and the client will pay up to X above that. Which yeah. I think we, yeah, we used to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a good one. Um, this guy said food, booze, entertainment, whatever it takes. <laughs> um, somebody said, uh, oh, Wendy Papazan said in Austin, people are going 50 to 65% over list price right now. Mm, isn't that crazy? Man, I wish we'd have bought something in Austin years ago. God, would, I mean, that's crazy. 50 to 65% over list price just to get a, just to get the house. Yeah. Well, and yeah. And then you, yeah, you're going to have to definitely have cash because it's going to probably not going to price. Oh yeah, they can't get a loan. Um, another person said that they've started paying the seller's transfer and uh, record cost, any taxes, like 1% of sales price, just on top of way over list free rent backs. People are, a lot of people said we've offered to let the sellers stay for free for the next two months or whatever in the house. Uh, Lots of love letters, lots of pictures of clients and families and kids and dogs waving appraisals. I mean, it's just, I think people are trying to get any creative way that they can. Uh, oh, this girl said, my clients have been sending uh, um, Harry and David cookies with every offer that they submit. 
Oh my gosh. Oh, and you know, the sad thing is I hate this for everybody. It has to be hard on the sellers, to, yeah. you know, to have to, you know, choose like that. And it also is so hard for the buyers emotionally. I have the funniest story to tell you. So Sarah, we, we had a client that was actually referred to us, um, who to list their house in Louisville and it's a, was listed at eight, 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 I think was what it was listed at. And so clients came through and it was multiple offer. There were five offers. These clients didn't have a, didn't have a realtor. So Sarah, we were representing both sides of them and, uh, they, they were, they wanted to submit like a nice letter with their fit with, you know, with everything, but it, she, long story short, she's pregnant with twins and they have a little baby, like a little, little baby. And they just found out she's pregnant. So that's the whole reason that they want this big house is because, but they haven't told anybody. So, um, uh, lo and behold, they wrote that in their letter and presented it to the sellers. Well, the sellers chose their offer because they, they loved that they had a family that they were going to grow up in the house and, you know, they had twins and, and she was pregnant with twins, all this stuff. And so it said, like, please keep confidential. Well, they called and said a couple of weeks ago that their mother-in-law, the mother-in-law works at a little boutique in town. And I guess the seller went in there and said, hey, we're selling our house to this sweet family that lives over on such and such street who's pregnant with twins and, and, oh the, gosh. and it's the mother-in-law. Can you believe that? And she didn't even know. <laughs> oh my gosh. And she found out that way. She That's found great. Out from the sellers. Yeah. But long story short, it just goes to show, I mean, people are they're, they're spilling their life just to win these listings and these are these uh, contracts and these multiple offers right now, because it's just nuts. It's got a, it's got a, it's got, hopefully the pent up listing will, will switch. I hope it does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And which that's, I think is the other issue that's, that's out there is uh, getting listings. And, you know, I think in, in this kind of situation, you got to find people before they let the world know that they're thinking about selling uh, and, you know, add value to their lives in whatever ways you can, you know, and maybe it's not just even around real estate, but build that relationship and that trust um, so that, you know, when people think of listing their house, they think of you. Yeah. We, Sarah and I just had this conversation this morning. We have a, we have somebody that's, we're working through all, well, everyone on the team is working through calling our whole database to try to get listings right now. And she texted me this script this morning and said, this is what they were all going to use. And she said, hey, this is Sarah with Real Estate Partners 360. We're taking a survey of everything, of everyone and the dream number on their home right now. We want to know if someone knocked on your door and said, we'll give you X to buy your house. Uh, what, what would that number be for you to consider selling it? Just to try to figure out like, hey, are they you know, and, and then because if they have a number, then at least they would think about selling it. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, some may say I, there's no way I, for no amount what I sell it and that's fine. But at least if they even have a number, because right now you just never know, you might, we might be able to get them that number. Yeah. I've gotten two letters in the mail recently on our home and wow. you know, ours is in jumbo market price, yeah. which hasn't been selling for years, which all of a sudden now, because people are moving from Cal to Texas, from California, like crazy, uh, we've had two letters from realtors and I think they're both working with the same person. Oh, Jimmy said 10% of the home of the, all the homes sold were over a million dollars. Well, I believe it because you know, the house that we bought in Charleston, we've just done a bunch of work on the outside, completely painted it. And it was over a million. And now we've had people knock on our door. We've had people drop off letters. We've had people do all kinds of steps, like thinking that I guess it's a flip and wanting yeah. to buy it. Um, and I told Adam, I can't even believe it. I mean, the, the price point of what people are willing to go up to just to be able to, to get into what they want to do. It's, mm -hmm. it's not like it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, and my, 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 pro, my thought is always, you always have to lead your conversations no matter where they are, because you never know where that person in that, you know, networking group or your kid's soccer game or whatever is thinking about selling or has to sell because I think people want to move closer to family. They're wanting to move out in rural cabins and ranches yeah. and things that, because of COVID that I would never miss a conversation that I could turn it towards uh, real estate. And my favorite one is, you know, have you ever thought about, you know, you might be good in my business yeah. and they have to ask what's your business and by the way, I don't care if they say, yes, I want to sell real estate because hallelujah, I hope they do. Uh, but 99.9% .9 of them will say, my sister's looking to sell, or I was thinking about selling. Yep. And if I don't give that conversation a chance to go there, I already have no, you know, yep. at least increase my odds that I might get someone that knows someone. And then the other thing is to do things in large groups, you know, offer, you know, 
talks or, or conversations. And it doesn't have to be about boring stuff like, you know, it could be anything to do with a person's house. You never know when somebody's fixing their house up, not for them, but for for it for it to resell and bring in top dollar. So any opportunity to get in front of 50 eyes instead of two uh, and get ahead of anybody who's raised their hand and said, yes, I'm going to sell this year. That's that's where you have to get in this kind of market. You can't well, wait until they say, I'm, I'm, I need to sell. Well, and right now we have, we can do that so easily with social media. I mean, people are getting, you can get on and go live on Facebook and have 200 people watch and talk about the market and, and talk about what's going on and see if you can just get anybody to raise their hand that they know somebody, if not themselves, maybe they know somebody who is looking to sell or for the right price. I mean, heck, honestly, Adam would kill me. <laughs> Hope he doesn't listen to this. I mean, for the right price, I'd turn right around and sell this. Stuff. I mean, that's the life of a realtor. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. For sure. I when mean, you get honestly, for listings, you start selling your own for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, just, just because it's, it's a great, it's when it's a seller's market, you know, if somebody's willing to pay for it, then awesome. You just never know. Yeah. Well, and I think adding value, even if it's not around what the market's doing, but it's just around anything that you can add value into someone else and start a conversation. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you stand a better chance because you're talking to people and those yeah. people either are the people that are thinking about selling or they know someone who's thinking about selling. Yep. Yeah. There's a, there sure is a lot going on in the industry right now. So <laughs> yeah, there is, there surely is. So uh, again, we'll put the, in the show notes, uh, any, any final thoughts you want to add on any three of those uh, Zillow uh, multiple offers or, you know, the focus on why now is the time to get focused on getting more listings, even though it's hard that now is the time to do that. I think my overall ending thought is just if you aren't paying attention to what's going on in the industry and in the market and in the local market, if you don't know your local numbers every day, if you aren't waking up every day, remember, because I love the question. I'll never forget the first time Tony DeSello asked me when you wake up every morning and you roll out of bed and your feet hit the ground, do you think of yourself as a realtor, as a business owner? And mm -hmm. if we aren't thinking of, our, of ourselves as a business owner and, and we're not becoming the local expert and, and we aren't knowledgeable about everything, then we're putting ourselves at risk. And so I think you've just got to figure out, I don't care if you have to time block for, you know, two hours a week to just understand what's happening in the industry. You got to do it. We, we don't have the luxury of not understanding that stuff anymore. No. And, you know, majority of uh, realtors haven't prepared enough wealth and passive income yep. for the industry to go away overnight and then be okay. So we're two massive topics that we're yep. constantly preaching is please, please, please build your wealth and passive income because you just never know when life's going to give you a gradually and suddenly if it's happened to uh, other big players in the industry, it can happen to us. And we have to really just kind of all stand together no matter what company we're with and really do the hard stuff so that, so that we don't lose uh, a, a, a phenomenal industry that we all love. Yep, so, I agree. Totally agree. Yeah, so love it. So for those of you that are not with KW, again, this is not KW or not KW, but I know you won't have access necessarily to listen to Gary's talk next week yeah. uh, on uh, the industry and what he sees Zillow's play Ming and all those kind of things. Uh, we will put a link in the show notes and reach out to us at info at everything life in real estate. And we'll make sure that you have a a ticket to get to hear that every person in the industry should hear no matter who they're with. And uh, then if you have any thoughts, questions uh, that you'd like to discuss with us, reach out to us at info at everything life and real estate. If you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe below. And the greatest compliment you can give uh, Dana and I is to pass our conversations on this podcast along to anyone else that you think might benefit from them. And again, we'll just try to bring you everything life and real estate. Uh, and hopefully we hit some topics that are meaningful and helpful to you. So Dana, I guess I will see you next week. Yeah, that is next week. All right. See you then. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategies and tactics to inspire you to live an abundant real estate life. Don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you the best content. Find this and other valuable information at everythinglifeandrealestate.com.